I watch a lot of cinema and I tell people, even with all this great technology and the advent of so many, so many cameras and editing technique, I go back to Fritz Lang's M for just visual and storytelling <laughs> inspiration. And for you with Carl Dreyer, can you just tell our listeners and viewers why sometimes learning from these masters from maybe 60, 70 years ago can still can be a real great creative fountain for even today's technology. What is it about their work? Well, I, think that the, yeah. I think that the main point you'd have to really, that movies is obviously about technique and it's about storytelling. And there's a pacing that in modern days, we might not be able to find in the old movies, but movies are also about slices of life. They are a way of looking at life and they're basically a way of appreciating how to live. They are all trying to gain access of what is it to be human. Different genres of different ways of looking at human existence. These old guys were very profound thinkers, but in visual terms of being directors. So they, they give us slices of life through their cinema. So there's just great knowledge of how they're used to lightning and the story and the elements they have. And a, a guy like Dreyer, he had sort of a, a monumental way of looking at life and looking at the fragile existence of humanity and a way of misunderstanding and the way he pulled down everything artificial and everything un unneeded to create these very clean images about this, about human existence and the fragile, fragile of life and stuff like that. So he's he's a very, I don't, he's not an inspiration in what I do now. I do something completely different, but inspirational in in gaining knowledge about cinema and life he's he's an absolute master. so he's very he's something that he's, he's very close to my heart dryer and obviously Lars von Trier who proclaims himself to be in the heritage uh, tradition of uh, but he himself is very different but these kind of directors you know are just very interesting interesting yeah no, I, I definitely think, and I think I, I've also been teaching in film school. And I think one of the things that was a little discouraging in going there was that some reasons film students' knowledge of history starts when, you know, in the 80s or with the, the arrival of, of uh, Steven Spielberg. He's a great director, but he is standing on the shoulders on a long and very artful tradition of uh, masters before him. And I think there's, there's great knowledge to be gained to going back to the old grand masters of cinema and see what they did. And some of them, even by today's standards are better. I always, when I have students or when I talk to people, go back and look at an old Billy Wilder movie. He, he's more cutthroat. He's a very better storyteller. And he doesn't miss one beat where you would, I mean, use three punches, he uses one. Uh, there are some of the Billy Wilders, I mean, they are racial sharp in how he's a story that I, I don't know anybody, maybe besides David Fincher today, that could do the same kind of storytelling. And, and as we're leaving, just 30 seconds, if, if just a cinephile comes up to you and asks can, that they want to actually see a drier film or a wilder film, can, which two films would you point them just to start their journey with these respective filmmakers? Uh, Billy Wilder, I would see Sunset Boulevard and uh, Dreyer, you should see Oval. Uh, in, 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 I don't know what it's called in English, but it's called Oval, the word. I would translate, but I'm not sure. Or Gatsby. Gatsby from Dreyer is an amazing, amazing, wonderful movie. It's so strange that I can guarantee you, you have never seen anything like it and never will.